just arriving, please remember that you can text your prayer concerns and your celebrations into the phone number on the front of your bulletin. And we'd like you to do that here at the early part of the service. Thanks.
Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just wanted to make sure you could all hear. Um, we're glad to have you here on this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. It's good to gather in God's parking lot to offer our prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. A reminder uh, to text your celebrations and prayer concerns to the number on the front of your bulletin. And um, please join us in singing our gathering song, which you will find on page eight. Again, welcome. We're glad that you are here with us on this beautiful day. Please join me as we pray together the prayer of the day. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning. I need all the children out there to help me with a little bit of a, a quiz. And so we're going to answer this quiz by beeping on our car horns. And those cars out there that don't have children in the cars, I still need your help too. So I want full audience participation on this. So what I want you to do is I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to picture two fish and five loaves of bread. Maybe picture that on your kitchen table, the area where you normally eat. Think about what that looks like. All right, if you've got that image in your head, you can open your eyes. Now, imagine it was just me who was eating that food. Now, I think that's probably enough to fill my belly and give me a good dinner. Who agrees that that's enough food for one person to eat? <clears throat> great, great. Now, maybe, let's think about maybe a family of four. At my house, it's me and my wife, Christine, and my two children, Julia and Jackson. 
I still think that's probably enough for all four of us to eat. Does anyone agree with that? Awesome, awesome. Now, let's say that we're trying to feed everyone who's at church right now. Maybe there's 100 people in the parking lot. I didn't, I didn't do a head count, but let's say there's maybe 100 people in the parking lot. And we've got two fish and five loaves of bread. I, I don't know that we could feed everyone with just that little bit of food. Anybody out there think we can, can give everyone a good meal? Every, uh, all right, there's some people there that think we can do a lot with that, and that's great. The amazing thing about today's gospel story is Jesus has two fish and five loaves of bread, and he feeds over 5,000 people with that little bit of food. I think that's just amazing. It's just an amazing story in the Bible today. And you might ask me, Mr. Piper, how does Jesus do that? And the short answer is, I have no clue. But, but there's a little bit of a hint in, in, the, in the Bible reading today. I want you to listen closely when Pastor Kim reads it. Because what happens is that Jesus takes that food, he looks up to heaven, and he blesses it. And then, through that miracle, all 5,000 people are fed, and there is plenty of leftovers. So what I think that means is through the power of prayer, amazing things can happen. Jesus can do amazing things with the power of prayer, but so can we. And so I want us to all remember for the rest of this summer, even as we head into school in the fall, whether that school is at home or, or in the building, remember what we can do with the power of prayer. And so let's say a prayer with me right now. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for letting us pray with you. Thank you for the many blessings you've given us and please help us to remember to share what we have. In your name we pray, amen. And now is our opportunity to have those car horns sing a little bit in our next song, We Are the Church. Today's first reading comes from the book of Isaiah, the 55th chapter. God invites Israel to a great feast at which both food and drink are free. God also promises to make an everlasting covenant with all peoples, with promises that had previously had been limited to Israel. As David was a witness to the nations, these nations shall now acknowledge the ways in which God has glorified Israel. Ho, oh, everyone who thirst, come to the waters. And, it, and you that have, come, have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 145, 
verses 8 through 9 and 14 through 21. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. The Holy Gospel for this ninth Sunday after Pentecost comes to us from the 14th chapter of St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, when Jesus heard about the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, it seems to me that the Gospel writers really must have liked this story. Because other than Easter, this is the only uh, gospel miracle story that appears in all four gospels. And because it appears in all four gospels, it has been preached on literally countless times. The story of the loaves and the fishes has been this focus about, of sermons about miracles in general, sermons about Jesus' compassion, sermons about our role in God's work, and sermons about even the generosity of the little boy who shared his lunch in John's version of this story. This familiar story of loaves and fishes can point to any number of good sermon topics, and um, I'm guessing you've probably heard most of them. But there is another direction that the story can lead us, And it's to a place that we are all quite familiar with, I think. And that is being called to something we don't think we're up to. Being asked to do something that we feel inadequate to accomplish. That's certainly what happened to the disciples in the story as Matthew tells it. The disciples had come back to Jesus after teaching and preaching and healing out in the countryside. Jesus himself had just received the dreadful news that his cousin, John the Baptist, had been beheaded. Jesus needed to get away to pray and to process this news, but the crowd still followed, and Jesus had compassion on them. 
the disciples, who are, as you know, sometimes made to look foolish and unbelieving throughout the Bible stories, are made to do just that in this story. But really, they were simply being practical. There were lots of people gathered to hear Jesus, 5,000 men not counting the women and children with them. The disciples may have had growling stomachs themselves when they suggested to Jesus that he send the people away so they could buy something for their suppers. But Jesus says, no, they can stay here. You give them something to eat. What? Jesus had to be kidding. All that was available to them was five loaves of bread and a couple of fish. That would hardly feed the 12 of them much less thousands of hungry people, just as Mr. Piper said. Only two, two fish and five, lo lo five loaves, Lord. What good can so little possibly do? Only five loaves and two fish. That phrase has become the response of the ages when people feel overwhelmed by the task confronting them. We all feel that way at times. Parents worry about guiding their children on the right path despite all the pressures to stray. What are we to do? We have only five loaves and two fish. The laid-off worker struggles to make ends meet in an economy which sees prices of the basics going higher and higher. What is he to do? He has only five loaves and two fish. A spouse is trying to make a go of a rocky marriage but doesn't know where to turn. What is she to do? She has only five loaves and two fish. Your youth and your health are slipping away and you don't know what lies ahead for you. What are you to do? You have only five loaves and two fish. We have all faced situations where we simply don't feel that we have what we need to tackle what lies before us. We don't have the resources. We don't have the energy. We don't have the skills or the wherewithal. We feel inadequate. We look around and we see scarcity. Surely that's what the disciples must have felt when Jesus told them to feed the multitudes. You give them something to eat, Jesus said. And the incredulous disciples could do nothing but say, but we have only five loaves and two fish. Well, thankfully, the story doesn't end with thousands of hungry people because the disciples couldn't think creatively. No, the good news in this and in every story is that Jesus intervenes. He looks at his puzzled, confused disciples and says, bring your loaves and your fish here to me. Jesus says, bring what you have and give it to me. And looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the 12 and they all ate, Matthew tells us, and were satisfied. And at the end of the meal, 12 baskets full of leftovers were gathered up. How the loaves and fish fed all those people, we don't know. Did Jesus multiply the loaves all at once so the disciples had to recruit help to distribute all that bread? Did it happen as the loaves were being passed through the crowd? When someone tore off a chunk of the bread, did the loaf suddenly grow back, regenerate? Did new loaves and more fish appear when no one was looking? Or as some have suggested, was the miracle that everyone shared the small amount they brought with them. And with all contributing, there was abundance and not scarcity. Well, we don't know the answer, but exactly how many were fed with what started out as so little isn't the point of the story. The point is that Jesus himself intervenes, telling us to bring what we have and give it to him. What is insufficient in our own hands becomes abundant in his. And that is 
good news for anyone who feels inadequate in the face of life's pressures. There are many, many bright, creative, and experienced people, people who are highly respected in their fields, who in these days when COVID-19 infections are rising instead of declining, are feeling confused and inadequate. Things that they've been doing for decades are no longer working. Every day brings new challenges. How do we safely teach our students? How do we tend to the sick without getting sick ourselves? How can we care for the lonely when it's not safe to be together? How do feeding programs work when it's not safe to gather? If I can't work from home, how safe is the public transportation I use to get to and from my job? When patrons can't safely dine at restaurants and professional athletes can't safely play their sports, when people of faith out of love for their neighbor can't safely worship in their sanctuaries, well, everybody feels inadequate. Even if we have resources available to us, we may be running low on energy or engagement, or just plain ideas. Because you see, we are sometimes right in our assessment that on our own, we are inadequate. We aren't sufficient. We have, after all, only five loaves and two fish. But Jesus calls us to bring what we have, as little or as broken or as scarce as it may be, whatever it may be. Jesus tells, it, tells us to give it to him. And when we do, Jesus does what we cannot. He can take our paltry provisions and turn them into a feast. He can take any situation that we give to him and transform it into something new and life-giving. Even when we're tired, when we have compassion fatigue, when disappointments continue to mount, when we have situational trauma, even when the pages on the calendar turn ever more quickly with plans needed, but no definite answers in sight. We need to remember today's miracle story because it may feel like only a miracle will get us where we want to be on the other side of a pandemic, living into a new normal. Dear friends, in these days when we may feel inadequate to the task we're given, let's encourage one another. Let's extend grace and understanding to each other. Let's help when we can and ask for help when we can't. Let's allow each other and allow ourselves to come up for some air. And the miracle story we read this morning, may the miracle story we read this morning remind us to take to Jesus whatever we have, the good and the bad, the joyful and the sorrowful, our abundance and our scarcity. For Jesus says about all those things, bring them to me and our little becomes more than enough. Five loaves and two fish will feed everyone. And our inadequacy becomes confidence that God will work through that which we offer. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing together our hymn of the day.
Together, let us confess our holy Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come before you, O God, bringing our prayers, bringing our celebrations, bringing uh, our five loaves and two fish, trusting that you will do something with our gifts, as small as they seem. Today, we give thanks for the fact that Barb Turnacliffe is with us today. Wonderful news. We celebrate Brady Zell's confirmation and his 15th birthday this week. And we celebrate the coming wedding of Eric Altenberg and his fiancée, Emily, on August 8th. We lift up Russ before his surgery. We pray for Nick. We lift up the Faber family and the Sorkness family. We pray for Clyde. We lift up Tom. We pray for Sean. We pray for Katie after her surgery and coming treatment, including chemo and radiation. We pray for Kay's dad. We left, lift up Jodell in prayer. We pray for Cookie's family and to help them through their terrible loss. And we pray for Robert Clary recovering from pneumonia. All these things, O oh Lord, and all those things that you see that we need, we entrust to you, O oh God. We rely on your endless goodness and mercy. We know you hear our prayer, and we trust that you will make possible what we cannot do on our own. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We have received uh, the offering and uh, a quick note and thank you that in addition to your regular offerings, uh, this morning we've collected $70 for school supplies. Uh, school supplies are our August uh, mission of the month, so you still have uh, several weeks, two more drive-in worships this Sunday or this month uh, in order to uh, share gifts, bring gifts in kind or um, funds for us to purchase them. Please pray with me our offering prayer. O God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Before we begin our communion liturgy, I invite you to um, take your little communion cup of elements, and uh, if you would like to open those 
uh, ahead of time, I know that um, sometimes they're a little sticky. So we'll let you do that uh, and have those prepared before we begin. We come to celebrate the presence of the risen Christ among us. We recognize him in the breaking of the bread and the pouring of the cup. The Holy Spirit has brought us to faith and gathered us here as Christ's body, the church. With your faithful people of all times, places, tongues, and races, we lift our song of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, your glory fills all the heavens and the earth. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he poured it out for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now may this the precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in our sending song, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.